Hey Robot Makers, I recently posted this on Twitter and I couldn't believe the response I got over this one image. This is the Clustered Pi project which I created to learn more about how to cluster things together using things like Docker and Portana and also to learn what I could do with a bunch of Raspberry Pi Zeros. And I based the design around the original Cray 1 supercomputer from the 1970s. And this was actually launched on the year that I was born in 1975. So the question I got asked the most on Twitter was why did you do this and what can it do? So let's take a look. So let's have a look at this project in a bit more detail. So this is actually part four of the video series. So originally when I was looking at how to cluster Raspberry Pis together, I used a bunch of Raspberry Pi 4s because they're much quicker than the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 and they're a bit easier to network as well because you've got the ethernet cable. Uh, so this Raspberry Pi Zero runs on Wi-Fi um, and I might change that around just because it can get a little bit noisy on the RF when you've got all those 12 modules running together. It also uses quite a bit of power as well. In this little project, one of the goals I wanted to understand was how does clustering actually work? What can I do with a cluster? I wanted to graph some data from the cluster using Grafana to visualize the MQTT data from some of my sensors. I have uh, temperature sensors and so on. Uh, I wanted to set up a database server, something like MongoDB or MariaDB. I certainly wanted to host some websites. So if you go to cluster-pi.com, that website is actually hosted on the clustered Pi itself. And I wanted to build that site using Markdown and Jekyll. And Jekyll is actually what runs in behind the scenes on GitHub pages. If you've ever published a uh, GitHub pages site, you're using Jekyll behind the scenes. I also wanted to try out using Flask to develop some Python applications that I could actually host on this local server and have it accessible via the internet so it's a bit more interactive than a static web page. And then finally I wanted to do a bit more home automation using Node-RED and run all these things using Docker, manage them with Portainer and have them running as containers. So I designed this in Fusion 360 so my original design was a little bit shorter uh, and I hadn't really thought about where the wires would actually go. So in this original design, you can see over here where the modules actually have the power. Uh, it's inside the core, which isn't that, it's quite a tight space. So what I've actually done is flip these over and have the power coming in through well, under the seating area and actually works really, really well. Now, the original design had one of these little modules and the Raspberry Pi would sit inside the module, just push fit. And this was a little bit hit and miss. Sometimes they would go in, sometimes they really wouldn't go in. But it was a little bit flimsy. These things didn't print very well either. There wasn't much height on that. That meant when I come to put the uh, the clustered pie together, I wanted to use some little pieces, little pieces like bench pieces and also little top pieces as well that would help give the model some cohesion, some stability uh, without using any glue. What I did is I redesigned this piece so that the, the Raspberry Pi Zero would actually screw fit to the module. No screws required. Uh, I just sort of scrap that. So it's made up of 12 pieces, 12 individual pieces of pie. So there is a, a pie holder, there is a base plate, and then there's some seating cushions and the top holder as well. The panels are removable and can enable an access to the pins and memory cards. And also the, the cushions and the side cushions can be removed as well if you, if you don't want those. So the design inspiration, as I said, was from the Cray 1 supercomputer. I feel your screen with hearts and roses. So this was originally designed in 1975, the first one was sold in 1976 and in today's money it's about $33 million that this would cost. So the Cray 1 was a really unique computer at the time because it was 64-bit. Now if you think we've only just gone to 64-bit for our Raspberry Pi operating system. So this is over 40 years ago and we've only just caught up with that on some of the Raspberry Pis themselves. So the new Raspberry Pi 02s are 64-bit. The original Raspberry Pi like this one is only 32-bit. The processor speed was 80 megahertz in speed. Our Raspberry Pi 2 actually runs at 1 gigahertz and the memory for the Cray 1 and it came with a whopping 8 megabytes of memory. They called them words back then. Whereas a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 has an amazing 512 megs which we consider to be probably not quite enough to do decent amounts of work. But where this really shone at the time was in how many floating point operations per second that it could do. Now floating point operation is kind of one of those benchmark calculation metrics that we always use on computers. Uh, it's used in graphics cards, in GPUs, and it's also used to compare supercomputers, which is what this was back then. So this could do 160 million floating point operations per second, which was absolutely unheard of. And that's why these things, I'm gonna say sold like hotcakes, they sold just over a hundred of them uh, of the original Cray 1 and they were used in places like military, in uh, weather uh, forecasting, general government kind of modeling where they were looking at very large data sets and they wanted to crunch those numbers to get some kind of insight and in the auto industry as well to measure things like crash 
um, simulations to make sure cars, um, if they were going to crash, they would crash in a way that was desirable. The Raspberry Pi Zero 2, by comparison, can do 24 gigaflops. So that's 24,000 million floating point operations per second, which is crazy, but we consider that just regular. If you look at a regular graphics card, they can be doing teraflops. They can be doing a lot more than this. So this isn't even considered good by today's standard. More like the kind of power you get from a mobile phone. So what can you do with this? Now, this is one of those questions that I got asked a lot. What can you actually do with this? So this this hosts kesrobots.com, which is a website I'm just developing. So if you take a look at that, it's probably not working very well at the moment. That's hosted on the clustered Pi and clustered-pi.com as well. That's also hosted on the, the cluster. So I'm going to be using this to learn how to cluster modules together. So I'm going to be learning things like Docker and Patena and Kubernetes as well. And uh, if you want to know more about those things, Jeff Geerling has got some amazing videos on how to do this with Raspberry Pis as well, if you can get hold of them. Now, one of the things that really tickled me when I was looking through a bit of research on this uh, was this photograph that I came across. I think it's done the rounds on social media. And this is an Elliott, uh, National Elliott 405 computer being delivered to this, uh, the Treasury Department. And then there is a person holding a Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, exactly the same kind of angle going into the building. And that just shows you how far we've come in, uh, in less than a century of computing. This was a 1954 National Elliott and the Raspberry Pi that's being shown now is just a couple of years old. So, so we've come from great big machines that take up an entire room to things that can uh, fit in your pocket and given away free on the front of a magazine. So what I've got on screen now is one slice of the Raspberry Pi cluster. So you can see there there's power going in, that power cable can actually wrap inside. Now I've actually got some of these small modules, small USB modules that are kind of like an angle. So um, the cable can be going directly into and then doing a right turn into the Raspberry Pi. You can see the screws there that are holding it in there, just regular, I think the 2.5 mil screws. Uh, and I bought a bunch of these from Pi Maroni. The memory card at the top, nice and accessible if you need to change that out. And then you can see the little slot at the top as well, which is where the, the pieces of Pi go in to hold it all together. And this is all push fit. Other than the screws, there's no glue or anything like that holding this together. So the parts that make this up, we have the, they're all 3D printable, of course, and you can download the STL files if you go to clustered-pi.com. Um, there's the pie holder, which is the white piece. We have the base, which is the yellow piece. Looks like a piece of cheese. There's the cushions, which fit on the top. Uh, there's the top section, which is the very top, goes into that little slot up there. And they don't take very long to print out either. So this was a really fun project to do. I was really surprised by the amount of people who chimed in on Twitter, who were really enthusiastic as, as much as I was about this project. Um, and it's something I'll be developing and learning more about in the future as well. So thanks for watching and I shall see you all next time.